Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming for this talk. I know I have quite a fierce competition uh, going on <laughs> with the other talks. Um, so I'll um, just first few words about our company. We support, we work with Postgres, with vanilla Postgres, and we support our clients from uh, migration up to optimization, uh, config tuning. We have a lot of high availability projects that we support. Um, and we have a few tools that we developed and they open on the GitHub um, that you can use to speed up basically a process of uh, PostgreSQL administration. A few words about myself. So I um, was working in different communication related roles, so I'm not a technical person myself. And I moved through, through different industries. I worked in academia for quite some time and then I w went working with pharmaceutical uh, clients and now I've been in with databases for the past about seven years. Um, so it all looks like the product being quite cylindrically shaped at um, any point in my career. Um, with Postgres I've been um, quite active in the past couple of years, a bit more. Uh, I'm currently a chair of user group committee for PGUS and I'm also on the funds group and I've been involved in the recent FOSDEM conference, uh, just helping out with the community booth and things like that. So a few words about how this presentation came about. Um, I started to work uh, with databases and I obviously because it's open source, community is really important. I slowly but surely was trying to understand how the community is built, what community actually means, how it works, what the different roles are. And I must say that sometimes I found it a bit uh, not straightforward. So there's information out there and it's all, you can find it. Uh, there's some information on the web, PostgreSQL website, some information on PostgreSQL wiki. Uh, there are different talks that you can listen to. But um, in a way, putting this presentation together, I wanted to make it clear for myself as well, as well for people who are starting to work with Postgres, um, just to put this all, all this information into one place and to make it a very sort of hands-on deck that people can use as a toolkit once they move maybe from commercial databases to Postgres and they just want to understand how it works and all different components, but also for people who already work with Postgres and they just want to become more active uh, in their role within a community. So when we talk about Postgres, two things come to mind. Um, there's database and there is a community. So the database term is quite well defined on the website. It's very clear what it is. And normally there are no questions there. But when it comes to community, there are so many different groups and roles and people who are involved. And uh, we have, for example, quite a few clients that come to us and they just don't quite understand the concept of the community. So throughout this presentation, I will take you through all those different roles. I might not get into too much depth on each one of them, but there will be information there and this presentation will be put on the website and you can just download it and use it, as I said, as, a, as your starting point. And uh, I may quote Stephanie here. I really like this quote, that PostgreSQL doesn't have a community, it is a community. And I think it's really important to realize that these two things, they actually one. So they very deeply intertwine one in another and it's the PostgreSQL is an ecosystem. So you can't remove a community and PostgreSQL no longer gonna be existing basically. A um, few words about uh, different entities out there because I know that this is one of the topics that may be a bit confusing. There are different ones. Um, I would say the key ones, uh, especially considering that we are in at this conference organized by PostgreSQL Europe. Um, there is PostgreSQL Europe and uh, PostgreSQL United States. Other entities predominantly been created to support specific activities within the community, um, some for bureaucratic uh, taxation purposes, some for making sure that the funding is uh, going in the right direction and so on. But um, for the sake of this presentation, I will be talking about Postgres Europe and PGUS. The structure of PG Europe and PGUS is a bit different. And also the geography that 
each one of them covers is slightly different as well. So PostgreSQL Europe is um, made up of the board, and board, board members, they support the community within geographical Europe, so not necessarily EU, but the geography of Europe, and they support different activities within Europe. So they run this particular co conference. And by the way, if you are on Twitter and uh, you want to tweet about conference, uh, I would really encourage you to tag uh, PGCon for you. Maybe this will make Twitter more active and uh, also will attract other people who are not here with us today. Um, and in addition to that, they also run a booth at FOSDEM. FOSDEM is an open source event that I would also recommend attending if you're here in Europe uh, in February. And there is a Postgres booth there. And in addition to that, Postgres Europe also runs different PG days, which are conference smaller than this one, but they more locally located within the geography of uh, Europe. Once again, you can become a member. Um, it doesn't cost a fortune, it supports your community as well, so it's an important thing to consider. With PGUS, um, there the structure is a bit different. You have the board, but you also have different committees, and each committee is resp responsible for a particular activity. Like the user group committee uh, that I'm on is focusing on uh, supporting user groups. There is a conference committee that organizes events and so on. And uh, basically the idea is that PGUS doesn't have the same limitation as Postgres Europe with regards to geography, so they can support any activities outside the US as well. And three additional groups that I would like to mention. There's a funds group. Uh, you can find more information on the website. Um, I mean, once again, just to make sure that you don't take <laughs> like a, too many pictures, this will be downloadable from the website and it's like you can just grab it and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> Hopefully it will be helpful. So the funds group is responsible for allocating funds for different activities and projects and so on. A core team is often seen uh, within Postgres community as uh, playing quite a key role, and it is, but at the same time it's important to mention that obviously they getting involved in uh, particular decisions where the boards um, sort of have questions about, or they're trying to like expand certain activities and so on. Um, but they are still uh, very important. And then there's Code of Conduct Committee. I'm sure you're aware that this conference, as well as other community conferences, needs to be compliant for, with uh, Code of Conduct. It has been written and translated to different languages as well, so every conference that runs from the community, or, uh, community organizes them, or if you run meetups and so on, they need to all comply with code of conduct. It just makes, basically the idea is to make uh, places like this and events like this safe for, pe for people to attend. Some uh, marketing and legal stuff that I would like to also mention, I think it's important. There is some information about identity guidelines, so if you want to use Postgres logo um, in any materials or swag that you create in your companies, it's important to first um, read, follow that link and to read information there. Um, it's, again, quite straightforward. The idea, of, for example, behind using the black ink throughout PostgreSQL is to make sure that people don't emphasize, emphasize the SQL bit and then some people would pronounce it and call it Postgre. Um, and there's some information there also about the fonts you need to use, the colors, scheme, and stuff like that. With regards to PostgreSQL license, um, it is quite short. And um, the main idea behind it, it is quite fork permissive. So you can take the code, download it from the website, tweak it a little bit, and then sell it as your product. Uh, what you need to Remember doing that is that you can't sell it as PostgreSQL, you can't call it with the same name, and also whatever you do with the code, University of California is not responsible. So where shall we go from here? So when I was putting these uh, slides together, I was thinking about all the different aspects of the community and different activities that, um, that community runs, and ways how people could contribute, but also 
if you are a newcomer to the community and you're considering like you're basically trying to understand where you could find information there are different um places you can go to and it's kind of reminded me of the scene from alice in wonderland where alice asking cheshire cat where she ought to go from here and uh he asks depends a good deal where you want to get to and if uh you don't care much where to get to then it doesn't matter which way to go so i think I hope this presentation will give you an idea where you can go and then you can make a decision whether you want to go there. Um, so these are the key kind of directions that I figured would be useful. And um, I'll once again run through them uh, briefly. Uh, I know that we don't have too much time, but once again, all the information in the deck so you can use it later on. So if you're looking uh, for your local community, uh, the, for the word that I kept hearing is pug. And when I just started to get my exposure to a community, I couldn't understand what people are talking about. It was quite confusing, but <laughs> it's actually PostgreSQL user groups. And they are really important for the life of PostgreSQL tree, <laughs> if I may say so. So they really nurture the people that join the community and people who are already part of the community but they don't necessarily realize that they are part of something bigger and by being a part of it there are ways that they can contribute and grow the community and the more active people within the community we have the more contributors we have the code is better the environment overall in the community is better and everyone benefits um, from that. Uh, who can organize local user group? It's anyone. So it's basically there is no strict guides that uh, you must follow to organize a user group. Uh, it's not like a huge uh, bureaucratic procedure or anything like that. You just uh, make a decision that you want to run a local user group. Um, you can go on the website of postgresql.org and check if there are local user groups on that site and see if maybe there are some existing ones that need support because sometimes organizers struggle and they need help um, so you could help there or you, if you want just to attend one that's also great um, another thing of note is that the list on postgreskill.org website but also on the meetup.com these are not um, sort of maybe completely exhausting uh, lists you should really go and uh, just Google because sometimes on the meetup.com some uh, user groups would have their page but they're not part of the pro account of PostgreSQL. So it's just, you, you're just gonna go and, and see. Um, there's also a few mailing lists to which you can write the advocacy mailing list, for example, and you can ask whether somebody knows if there is a group in their region and if there's not, you're free to um, put, organize your own one. There are a few tips here in the deck uh, with regards to how to organize a meetup. Uh, there is a wiki page which I would advise to read as well. It has a lot of different tips. Uh, different tips about how to find a venue, different ideas for that. For the speakers, you can obviously now at the conference, because there are so many people here, you can uh, just talk to speakers if they want to speak at your meetup. Maybe they will give you other ideas. There's a speaker bureau that uh, different people within the community who want to be, to be speakers and they're happy to travel, they listed their names there. So you can always go there and take a look. Um, and there are different locations where you should consider to announce your meetup, especially if it's the first one. I would consider really announcing that as much as possible. And then once you have it established and running, obviously you wouldn't want to like over spam people. Um, then you need to choose your platform that you want to use for your regular updates for that. And with regards to growing your meetup, I think some people even here in the room, they, are, they have some experience organizing meetups. And uh, one of the key things to remember, even during, if you're, during your first meetup, you have three people coming, it doesn't mean that it's a failure and, and that's it. If you run it consistently and uh, people know that it's taking place at this time, at this place and so on, you will have a buy-in from people within the region and it, you will get more exposure. 
Um, also, if you need ideas, if you need help, if you have a meetup running, but you're struggling and, uh, I don't know, you're looking for speakers, you can't find a venue, and so on, you always can um, write to the boards and ask for their support or to the PGS committee, um, and we can help you with some ideas and help you find the place, find the speakers and announce it. Uh, with regards to meetup recognition, same as with uh, other PostgreSQL community-run events, there are uh, recognition guidelines that you can find on the website, and especially if you're looking for support from boards, obviously your event needs to be community-recognized. Uh, it's not very complicated, it's basically um, to make sure that there is a transparency, and if somebody sponsors, it needs to be clear, and the organizers needs to be um, equally sort of shared. Uh, and it needs to comply with code of conduct, as I mentioned before. Overall, I wouldn't go into too, deta too much detail uh, with regards to that, but if you have time, uh, on Friday there will be a talk by Henrietta <laughs> and Teresa, I think she's not here, um, and they will be able to give you some tips because they've been doing it for a while and they have plenty of uh, experience running these kind of events and bigger events as well. So. Moving on to a wider community, there are uh, plenty of PostgreSQL focused events and uh, some events that PostgreSQL has um, a booth there. You can find some events on the website, but if you in general want to know, get to learn the community in the personality level, I would suggest to go on PostgreSQL Live with the interviews that uh, Andreas has done with some people within the community, and then you can read more about people within the community and their background and where they're coming from and what they do and so on. And there is a talk about that that he gave uh, as well, so you can follow the link and, and watch that. Um, there are two kind of types of event li events listed on the postgreSQL.org website. There are community recognized ones and there are commercial events as well. The community recognized events would have this little medal next to them, and um, basically what it means that they are compliant with the guides, um, and the commercial events, they normally run by specific companies, and it's not to say that one type of event is better than the other, it's just uh, you have to be aware that there are slightly bit different uh, interests and the way they set up, so at least you know what to expect. Uh, there are also some external events, uh, at which uh, Postgres has some presence, so there is a booth that PostgreSQL um, runs there, and if you are in the area with uh, regards to those events, they I think they're predominantly in the States, uh, and you want to help out, so Mark Wong, who handles the organization of those booths, would be very happy to have you as uh, a person to man the booth, and there is his contact there as well. Um, and then with regards to support, once again, you can turn to the board for help. And um, here are some details about conference recognitions, very similar to the meetups. And you can, once again, <laughs> go to Henrietta's talk and you will find a lot of information there as well. If you don't want to miss uh, any events or call for papers, there are these two tools developed by the community. And I found them super handy, at least for myself, but also I know that other people using it. The main difference between these two is that the one, um, the lower one that the Stephanie developed has a call for papers as separate invites and the first one has that information within the conference invites. But I think those are quite handy also to have, just to make sure that you don't miss anything important. Another topic um, that sometimes uh, we've been asked as a company, and I know it's sometimes on mailing lists people asking for that information, is how do I learn Postgres, how I uh, dive a bit deeper. So there are two paths that you can take. You can do it on your own and you can take courses. With regards to self-learning, documentation is key. I mean, I can't emphasize <laughs> that strongly enough, but the, all the information is in the communica documentation. It's written by people who use Postgres, they develop Postgres, so it's really very uh, easily to understand, uh, and all the information is there. 
a lot of questions that have been asked on the mailing lists and some clients of ours ask questions like that. They can't find the answers in the documentation. There is also, if you want to stay up to date with regards to um, different developments that companies do, there is Planet Postgres and you can subscribe to that and get notification about any blog posts. Uh, and that could be useful as well. There is Postgres weekly newsletter as well, and this is mainly highlights about some bigger things happening in the Postgres um, ecosystem. And that's also quite handy. And there are mailing lists that you can consider subscribe to. There are some resources that, resources that I've put here. They are sort of Googleable, uh, uh, Googleable resources. Um, I'm sure you can find more. This is just an example and to give you something like a head start. And some personal blogs that I would recommend. One of them is Bruce's. I comment, um, I've put some references here to his blog, blog as well because he writes about quite a diverse uh, set of topics. Here are some classics sort of with which our DBA normally recommend to start when you are starting to learn Postgres. And, um, you can look into those. Additionally, if you want to do a course, so if you um, have the funds to do that, you can always go and check the sponsors, since no normally they, uh, PostgreSQL sponsors, and they normally run their own courses. The important thing to mention is that Postgres, as a community, doesn't have its own certification. So if there are certificates out there that uh, different companies companies provide after you completed your training, these are their own certifications and uh, it's not a community approved uh, unified certification. If you still struggle and you <laughs> sort of need help from uh, community members, I list here a few uh, platforms in social media where good people just helping others to learn Postgres, or if you have any issues and you wouldn't necessarily look into um, getting a vendor for that, but you have a quick question to figure out, you can go to those and ask some questions there. And there are also mailing lists. So mailing lists, just to uh, explain a bit more, if you are just joining Postgres, this is something that's really important to realize that a lot of communication happening on the mailing lists. The benefit of that is that you have a track record of all the communication that out there, so you can go to archives and see what sort of conversations took place. If uh, there is a particular issue you are interested in, you can just search the archives and see if maybe it has been discussed before, and if it hasn't, you can always mail and ask that, those questions. Um, there are different types of mailing lists, so you can choose what kind of topics you are interested in, and then you can subscribe to that and get all notification on that list. The important thing about mailing lists is that people that um, answer your questions, it's not their actual job to answer questions on the mailing list. Uh, they have their day job and they do that for fun, I would say, and to support the community. So it's important to be humble and tactful when asking questions and not to expect immediate response because you really never know in what kind of situation the person answering is at the moment. And uh, if you have any questions uh, with regards to Postgres, I always suggest because we are at PGCon for you and it's one of the biggest ones in Europe. Uh, well, it is the biggest one in Europe. And uh, there are a lot of people who know Postgres ins and outs uh, really well, so you can probably find an answer to your question here. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that. Now, if you still struggle <laughs> and you need some professional support, you can go to the website and find a list of different companies that provide services around Postgres um, on postgresql.org. And there's also some ma minor and major sponsor companies that also list it on the website. And those are companies that, in addition to the fact that they provide services around Postgres, they're also quite deeply involved in the community. So they would know um, maybe a bit more about how things function within the community. But it's something to explore and keep in mind. Um, if we're good for time, I think I might dive a bit more into this. So, 
With regards to hacking, there are a few things uh, that I would like to highlight. Um, there's often questions, especially people that are coming from commercial databases, uh, about roadmap, whether there is a roadmap in Postgres. The simple answer is there isn't one. Uh, so each individual and, and um, individual contributors or companies that hire people to work on Postgres development, they make a decision on what they want to work. Um, at the same time, not all the patches submitted going in. So it's all carefully, thoroughly reviewed and vetted before it actually goes into, the, into Postgres. But there isn't uh, a strict plan. So if you want to contribute, one of the ways to start is to subscribe to Hacker's mailing list. And this is where all the discussions about potential patches and ideas and brainstorm happening. And at first, probably just to read and to get familiar with the way how people communicate and different ideas out there. And uh, you can look through archives as well just to see what's happened before. And then you can start reviewing patches first and um, then submitting your patch to commit fast. Here's a quick overview of how commit fast happens. It's like it just to give you a top line overview of the process. There are five commit fast during which no new patch is submitted, but basically they are reviewed and pushed forward. The commit fast manager takes up like a manager role to make sure that things are going forward, people receiving feedback and so on. Uh, contributors, those are developers who are actually pushing their uh, new patches in, and then you have committers, which is a limited group of people. You can find their names on the on the wiki, uh, and they have um, ability to push the new patches to Git repository. So, from the process perspective, following those five commit fast, there is a feature freeze for that version of Postgres, and no new features. Uh, any new feature is going to go into the next version, and then following the beta release and uh, release candidate, there is a major release in September. Some things to know about uh, bug reporting. So if, in general, bugs in Postgres, uh, like t significant bugs in Postgres, Postgres are relatively rare because you have such a diverse community uh, that actually tests and uses Postgres and things are discovered quite early on. Um, but if you have an issue, if you have a bug, there are guidelines of how to submit a bug report on the website. Um, or if you're using a vendor who's, who provides your Postgres um, support, they will be able to do that because they normally, like our company, they, we do it all the time, so we would know what's the procedure for that. If you're interested in uh, development and hacking, I would suggest uh, these two talks at this conference. One is just one hour, I think, after this one's finished uh, with Melanie, so they will be able to give you quite some more information about this. If you are looking to hire somebody in Postgres space, or if you're looking for a job, um, there are a few places where you can um, look. And uh, here at the conference, is, there is a job board. I don't know if you notice next to the uh, registration desk on the right-hand side. And you can take a look there. Or you can just talk to sponsors and people around you, because I think the chances are that they're looking is quite high as well. With regards to recognition, a um, few things that basically would happen if you are involved in a community, if you are contributing to uh, the development of Postgres, if you're writing patches and so on on a regular basis, uh, you will get listed among contributors uh, list on the website. But for if you contributed to, to a particular version of Postgres, you will receive this wonderful coin. Um, and then you can have a nice collection of different uh, coins. And if you are a company that really invested in the community and contributes to the development of Postgres in, um, when we're talking about the code or community overall, you will be listed among the sponsors. Uh, on the website as well, and there are different sponsorship criteria that you can find on the website too. So I think this is like a run through all those different activities. Uh, as I said, I think this should be like a starting point for you to think about how, what you will, 
uh, what you would be interested in and how you would like to contribute. Um, if you can use this deck, I would be super pleased and the stronger the community, the stronger is Postgres. And thank you so much to all those people who helped me to pull this together. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm here. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we can do questions. Does anyone have a question, burning question? A, a comment? Wait, question or a comment, Heidi? <laughs> First time you hear me, right? It's always okay. So, uh, Valeria, first of all, like, thank you so much. I think it was the first presentation of this kind I ever like heard, where you put like all the things together. So I I know how much work it took. So I think it was great. Thank, thank you. you. I think it will be extremely useful, especially you know when you put this deck for people's reference. I think people do not even realize how useful is it. <laughs> <laughs> I even can get something from this. Um, so one uh, kind of additional comment I would make, uh, you know, about who and how. So that's what we'll be talking with Teresa on Friday. But what I can tell everybody, honestly, it takes passion and it does not matter who you are and what skill set you have, but you have to be passionate about this and you need to really want to have your meetup and like event or everything because uh, yes, we have all these resources, but as we all know, including me and you, things take way longer than you think and expect and uh, yeah. like you have to be persistent and really wanting to do something. So that's kind of advice I would give to everyone everybody, if you want to do event, do it, but be passionate and patient, both. All right, thanks again. Yeah, no, I, I agree, it takes, it takes time and perseverance, that's for sure. Anyone else got a question? Or a comment? <laughs> Needs to be a positive comment, though. <laughs> I just wanted to say, Bruce, you have a whole talk about this at FOSDEM last year, so, you know. One other resource I don't think was mentioned, maybe you hadn't seen it, but there's a, there's a website called PG Life. It's pglife.momgen.us, and it's like a live dashboard that shows mm. the IRC channel, shows the next conference, shows the commit, most recent commit, most recent question, most recent announce, most recent blog post. So pglife.momgen.us, and I use that so I can, when I'm traveling, I can get a dashboard to see where is everything right now? Is there anything on fire or whatever? Um, so uh, if that's helpful, I don't know. No, it's super helpful. Now I will add it to the deck before I publish on the website anyway, so people can have that. Any other takers? Everyone wants to go to lunch. Probably. <laughs> Thank you, Valeria. Let's give it up for Valeria Thank one more you. time. Thank <laughs> you.